Hey everyone, just wanted to do an update for March 31st. There have been some fantastic images and information that has come out and I wanted to share this all with you. I know a lot of you have been asking in the comments for a better picture of exactly how much lava has sort of filled up this valley. And today from one of the news sources here in Iceland, we have a picture of just that. And you can see it here exactly how much of this lava has engulfed this this valley it's it's crazy to me because i was there not that long ago and you know this this whole area was not completely closed off this area that you know people would go up and looking at this i mean you travel along this path here when i went and you know, I believe I was sitting you know, down here a little bit further and the lava was probably a bit further back. So even from when I was there, it has considerably gotten larger and it's going to get larger and larger. Now, this geologist Johan Helgeson has recently measured the amount of volume that Gelling Dalur and the surrounding depression and, and valleys and so forth have so that they're trying to estimate how long it's going to take before all of these valleys are filled up with magma from the eruption. Now, initially, the thoughts were that the valley where the eruption occurred was going to fill up in 10 to 20 days since the beginning of the eruption. And Johan's assessments, he's, he's thinking that's probably going to be roughly true. Uh, he was saying that if he had to guess, it would be somewhere between a week to 10 days before the magma begins to reach the pass on the east side of the valley and from there moving to a different area because uh, of Meldali, which is considerably larger in volume than the eruption valley itself. Now, according to university researchers, flow measurements in the eruption possibly indicated that the power of the eruption began to decrease, but new measurements are showing that that's just not the case at all, with the average flow to be just over 5 meters cubic and you can see here the university of iceland data that they have done over the last little bit i believe what they were saying is data from the 30th was not 100 percent reliable so they used data from the 29th and the 31st and they've compiled this information with the flow to be five meters cubed now if we take a look here at this at this chart let me just zoom out a little bit so we can get a little bit so we can see gallinudalur is right here and this is showing you exactly how much volume each of these valleys can can take now the valley where the eruption began is slowly filling up with magma and flowing to the northwest and that's sort of towards this way uh, as we traveling towards the pass where it will most likely start to rise from the valley and if it does then the flow to the other area can happen very very suddenly so it's it could be quite dangerous in terms of a, a sudden onslaught of just lava pouring out. And they're saying that if, if a wall breaks from the crater, crater on the east side, which can happen when the amount on the west side is increased and a load is starting to create on the east side, it could just happen suddenly. Although the valley fills, this doesn't mean it immediately begins to look for other depressions, uh, but there is a possibility that it will be able to take on a heap shape and then the lava will flow just not outwards but begin to flow evenly over the crater walls and around to form a traditional shield volcano sort of a rubbish shield eruption type now the depressions all fill up in less than three months that's what they're saying so these three here they're assuming that these are all going to fill up in three months Johan said it was likely that the lava flow would first stay in Gellingadalur, which is the area that the eruption actually happened. And then the lava flows through the pass to the east into this Merdalur, uh, this area here, which is uh, 44.7. And then it could keep on going up. I mean, but again, they're also saying that it's possible that it could flow to the south here, uh, to this depression this valley over here which is a lot smaller now the total size of all of these areas is 55.8 meters million meters cubed let me just get that right i believe it's million million meters cubed 
And according to all the calculations that they have with the flow rate and everything like that, that they're saying all the depressions in the valleys would fill in less than three months. So if lava flows into this lower one, the Nout Kauge, Howie, someone can correct me in the comments. Uh, in the short term, there is risk of damage there because the depression is small and the valley doesn't hold a lot. And the thin flowing lava could make its way to the sea if this one here fills up. It's also pointed out that south of Galindalu, there's another pass to the east at 229 meters. And it can sort of leak towards this lower area from, from this passage. So there's, there's a lot of places that this could go. They are saying that pretty soon it's going to start spilling into other valleys. The, I guess the downside is it's getting perhaps more dangerous as it moves towards these other valleys, potentially out to the sea. It's getting harder and harder to get a really good up close look of the actual eruption which I know for a lot of people who want to come visit and see it would be really nice. The good news and the silver lining on that is there's a lot of high points around the actual eruption. So even if it fills up and it starts spilling out to the other areas, you're going to be able to get up to these top areas and get a pretty good look. Not as good as some of the people who were able to get in the first few days right on this little hill here. I'm super jealous of all of them. I should have went day one. But I am lucky that I was able to get pretty close, and it's you. It's I think I was around where this smoke was, uh, which was it was fantastic, and I grabbed a piece of lava rock right here. As I said, this was a path open when I was there, and now it is completely filled with lava. It is unbelievable to me how quickly this has filled up within one week, and if it's gone this far. Uh, you know what they're saying is is 100% going to be true it's going to fill up it's going to spill over into the other areas and the path going to the actual volcano and the eruption i mean we're coming in you can see the path here along the bottom sort of coming in from this bottom right that could be just lava in in a couple weeks so it's it's unbelievable to me that this is this is how it's going to go so that's just the latest update for the 31st. I hope you all enjoyed it. As always, hit the like button if you like it. Comments for all the stuff that I missed or said incorrectly because there's always something. And then, uh, yeah, subscribe if you like if you like the, the content I'm giving. I do have a live stream going. I'm going to try to keep it up. The live stream also has seismic activity in Krusevik, which I'm getting from the meteorological society or institution in Iceland. So there's a graph of that so that, I don't know, I thought it would be cool to take a look at what kind of earthquake and seismic activity there is in the Krusevik area alongside the video and the live stream of the eruption, just to see if as it flares up, if there's a correlation between the two. But that's it for now. And uh, I guess until next time, thanks for watching.